It's episode two. This one's the Hegel H390. 5,000 pound, 250 watts. All the damping in the world. I am going to do some spec comparisons between the 590 from the last video and uh, this 390. Not gonna get too far into comparing the sound. I will give you a couple of comparisons, but I'm gonna focus more so on this being a 5,000 pound integrated. Go from there. Let's get into it. So, I've been here now for about four and a half hours and I've done nothing at all. I came in, I thought, right, we'll get this, we'll get this done, we'll do this first part of the video straight away. Because um, I do them sort of in order, uh, I do them, I don't, I know I sort of keep saying it, but I don't pre-plan them, I just, so I shoot them in order, I'll speak to you now, then I'll listen, then I'll speak to you in a bit and, and go on like that. But I came in and the mistake I made was I put uh, music on straight away. Not to sound like your, your, your cliche hi-fi fan, but genuinely that's what's happened. I've come in, I've put music on straight away, I did a little update to the Rose, uh, system because it has um, sort of firmware updates sort of live and uh, and yeah and I've just been on a bit of a bit of an indie mission this morning and 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 listening so it's kind of a little bit higgledy piggledy because I don't need to now go away and and have another listen to uh, to the amp although I probably will so this one's about the 390 the H390 if you're here that's what you're interested in. Where the H390 sits for me, it's smack bang in the middle, only because the 590's 10K, this one's five, and the rest are between the, the sort of zero and five point, um, it thousands of pounds. So um, yeah, to, to me, and, and what, what it means to me is it, it's probably the honey point in that range. So relatively speaking, it is a uh, it's an, a high end. It's a five thousand pound integrated amp. It's a high end piece of kit. It's but it is a, a substantial amount more reachable than say the five ninety, which is a true high end integrated amplifier. There aren't many amplifiers that cost that much money. So um, yeah, you know that that that's kind of where it sits for me and. Probably where it sits for you if you're watching a video based on the 390, then the Hegel amplifier sort of system is, is um, you know, is, is probably what you're looking for. And yeah, you you wouldn't really you wouldn't really be here, I suppose, if it wasn't an amplifier that interested you. So you'll likely already know the costs and know the differences between the two, but. Um, Anyway, I'm, 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 I'm rambling now. That's where I see it sitting. It, it's still a relatively unachievable amplifier to most. Relatively speaking, it is half the price of the 590. And uh, is it half the performance? It isn't, it isn't. It's, uh, it's way, way better than that. So yeah, comparing the two, which I'll do in each step. So the next one I'll do will be the 190 and I'll compare that to the 390's ins and outs. The only thing we lose between the 390 and the 590 is one analog input, so RCA, typical interconnect input, uh, what we would call a, a low level input or an RCA input. And the one pair of XLR input. So with the 590, you can have two XLR in input, so there's there's two stereo pairs, and the 390, there's one. So in this system, how I would use it would be, my phono stage would actually be what I would use for balance. So I'd use the Hegel V10 phono stage, balanced into the uh, 390, and then the Rose unit, if I wanted to use a secondary streamer and not use the onboard streaming, which is something I didn't discuss in the 590 video, so I'll cover that in this one. Um, I would just either use, well, I would hope to use a coaxial digital input. So I couldn't get it working last time with the 
with the rose. So I used a fiber optic cable and I'll use that fiber optic cable now throughout. The DAX, don't quote me on it, I'll probably correct myself later in the video, but the DAX I think are both exactly the same. So Hegel use a specific DAC in their integrated amplifiers. If they can make everything perform at that point, there's no real need to go much further. They're, 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 they're more so focusing on the amplification than they are the high resolution nature of the DAC, which is something I agree with. It's a tiny, tiny, tiny fold of music that can go beyond that. We shouldn't expect brands to cater for something that is so niche leave that to secondary DAX, things like the, the, the Rose unit and stuff like that, which will do all, all, all sorts of resolution. Uh, and then we can use its own DAC to go into the Hegel via an analog input, and then we've got all the resolution we like. So um, yeah, you know, it, it's not kind of there for that. It's more there as a, um, a fun, convenient, good sounding option. You know, you can airplay to any of these units, just press and play on your phone, uh, you know, swiping down, choose the output device, press play, and away you go, and you're digitally streaming, you know, red book sort of quality. It's excellent. It sounds excellent, you know, and I would I would say for, for the majority of people it would be absolutely fine and primarily how it would be used. Uh, and, and then, you know, a vinyl front end or, or whichever. But you you know, you can and it does provide a massive upgrade if you were to go with some form of high res streamer and then go in analog, but it's very niche. There's very few of us that'll do that. I do do it, uh, and, and I know a bunch of people that do, but in the world, it's a tiny amount. So yeah, the, their DAX are capped there. Um, I'll, I'll put the numbers in the description or I'll pop them on the, the screen now, because like I say, I'm not, I, I am geeky, but I'm not necessarily into all of its guts and gubbins. I'm into the way it sounds. It could it could be the best spec thing in the world on paper, but if it sounds shit, I'm not interested in it, you know? So that's what I'm after. I'm after what it creates in the room. Um, yeah, so similar records. Probably listen to, like I said, I've been listening to indie all morning. Yeah, and I'm, I'm probably just gonna carry on listening. A couple of other little points that I've noted today, and, and I'll, I'll move them around in a minute anyway, so you can see the back of the pair of them, you know, the 590 and the 390 combined, so you can kind of get a, you know, it's not often you'll see them together and see the backs together, but you can also, you know, take note of things like build quality. Now, the, 590, the 390 is on par it feels like a brick. It's really, it's a 20 kilo amplifier, so it's a heavy amp, and it is built really well, really well. Um, the, the, but, but you've got to expect the 590 being a 10,000 pound amplifier, that you know, there or thereabouts, it is built to a slightly different standard. So it has a multi-piece chassis with, you know, solid ribs, things like that and and then uh, machine fixings along it whereas the 390 the 190 the 120 and the 95 they're all a folded steel scenario as you get with a, with a lot of, of boxes they're a little heavier and a little more substantial than 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 most that we get but uh, they are still that sort of folded kind of geometry if it were yeah same sort of feet same stand same switch underneath if I've got a gripe with all of them, and they're all the same, the circuit board that does the screen, there needs to be a little bezel around the inside of it because you can see some of the some of the gubbins. Now, that's you know, that's me being being fussy. If you're up close to it, like I do, get up close to it because I change them all the time and things like that. You can see that, and it would just take an extremely small trim. Now, if there's a reason not to do that because of sound which I don't think there is, but if there is, hats off, leave it off, I, I don't care, it sounds fantastic. Um, yeah, let's take a look at the back of the pair of them together. We'll just compare its ins and outs. I've just gone through them with you, but it's nice to see it together. And like I say, take note of things like the, the, the differences in build quality between the two. By me saying that the 390 is around 90% of the sound that you get, really 85, uh, that you get with the 590 it doesn't mean 
the 590 isn't worth its asking price. It, it definitely is. It's all relative to where we are and how comfortable we are with that size purchase of an integrated amplifier. Um, I would have the 590 over the 390 every day of the week. It is a better product. It's better built. It sounds better. It looks like a brute in the rack, which for, for me is great. For some, it's not a fuss. Um, and it has more ins and outs. It can do a bit more. So, you know, of course, that that's what I would choose. But the 390 is a stellar amp at 5K. It really is. I suppose what I'm trying to say is that it's not a giant killer in its own line of products, you know. Value for money out of all of them, I suppose we'll get to that after the fifth amplifier has been reviewed and I'll probably do a chart on the board and explain why, what I think. Like I say, I think this is the the honey point in, in the Hegel amplifiers. I don't know their numbers, so I, I don't know which amplifiers they sell more of. We've certainly sold more I was going to say 390s, we haven't. We've sold more 590s than we have 390s. We're, prob we're probably on a level field with the 390 and the 590. Um, the other units, you know, they, they, they just, with us, they, they sell a little bit less. But with those guys, I'd, I'd, I'd like to, you know, I've never asked and it's not really my business, but um, the which of their H series amplifiers the integrated amplifiers is the best seller i couldn't tell you but if i was to hazard a guess i'd say it's probably the 390 because it sits bang in the middle and we get nearly all of the performance it makes sense like i was saying with the whole dyne audio special 40 and contour 20i thing you know there's a there's a substantial price differences relatively marginal performance differences you know um Let's have a look at the back of them. I've been speaking for long enough. So, hopefully you can see me. You can see these two, 390, 590. You can see what I was saying about the, um, the folded steel chassis. And this is a sort of an aluminium. This is folded. And then you've got these bars at the top and then fixings. We've got terminal, uh, different terminals, a different binding posts. These don't have the issue that I said with not having a hole. So if you wanted to put your bananas in at 90 degrees, because you might think I'm being a little bit pissy there, but these aren't a standard depth, they're deep. So you put them in a rack that you've got, and then let's say you're using a, a banana plug with a, with a decent cable, which isn't that flexible. You've got another probably four to six inches to go. So get them in like that and then you've got no issue at all. You've only got, you've got the depth of the amplifier. So going back on what I was saying about the DAX earlier, ignore everything that I said about the resolution of the DAX. The DAX in both support DSD 64, 128, 256. Um, they both have uh, MQA support, but the 390 has it on every digital input, everything. So you you may have seen a little bit of B-roll in the video that, that re was registering an MQA file. Don't forget, I'm playing this from the Rose unit via uh, via fiber optic. So, you know, it was, it was and, and that was playing a master file. Um, the 590 only has it on its computer USB input. It doesn't have it on any of the rest. So. My, logically, that would say to me that the 390, 390 may have a slightly newer DAC. In order to do that to the 590, you know, it, it would have needed to have been made a little bit later and therefore it would have all those features. I can't see any other reason why the 390 would pip the 590 in terms of its, uh, you know, compatibility with MQA on all of its digital inputs. Now, you know, numbers wise, they're all the same. MQA 8X and a resolution of 348 or up to 348 32-bit. So that's for both DACs. So I think the DACs are the same. One's just slightly newer and one's just slightly older. So, um, so yeah. And then the other obvious difference is now, this one looks a lot busier than this one 
but it's just because of the way it's been jigged about on the back panel. There are more connections here, but there's only two more connections. All the rest are exactly the same. So what we've got, like I say, we've got two stereo pairs there, right, left, right, left, XLR1, XLR2. On here, we only have the one XLR input. Now, your guy with his 10,000 pound integrated amp is probably a little more likely to have more balanced inputs, which is why that feature exists. Uh, he, he may, his phono stage may be balanced, his CD player may be balanced, or his DAC from his transport or whichever. Um, whereas your sort of £5,000 amplified guy, he may not actually have an XLR input. And if he does, he's probably going to have the one. Or he may have multiple, and then he should be going for the 590. So, uh, yeah, but everything else other than the analog in, we've got one more analog in here, is the same. Bind and post slightly different. One more XLR input, one more analog input. The same DAC, if not pipped by the 390 because it has slightly less functionality in that we've got MQA on the USB but none on here and MQA on every part of the DAC on the 390. If you're not a Tidal user or an MQA fan, you know, it won't matter to you if you're not. So that's neither here nor there. But, you know, just in case, I know it's quite popular and I know the discussion's quite popular. So yeah, that's the two of them. That's the, the, the differences in functionality. Let's have a little chat about the way the, the 390 sounds. And um, yeah, I'm excited to tell you what I, you know, what, what I think of the 390. And then we'll move on to the 190. The 190, sorry, there's so many of them. The, the 190, which is I've just put in there now, so I'm gonna I'm gonna put that on now anyway while I make a couple of little uh, couple of little adjustments and I need to charge the camera a bit. In a minute. So we're back on the couch. I've got my trusty book. I'm taking notes. Uh, various things to say about the fantastic Hegel H390. So first up, great grip. Power, control of speakers, typical Hegel. Typical Hegel means you can probably listen to any one of these amplifiers from uh, from the 1500 pound point up, and there will be a sonic cue that's detectable throughout the range. People call it a house sound. If you want to call it that, call it that. You know, it, it's uh, it will have you know similar similar characteristics, not in the way that it gets hold of a speaker or controls a speaker or not in its resolution or, you know, micro resolution. Of course it won't, you know, the further up the line we go, the, the better that will be. But they will all sound like a Hegel amplifier, that sort of authority and grip and, and calmness about them, you know? So yeah, great grip, power, control of speakers, um, similar to what I was describing with the 590. Now the 590 has absolute grip of a speaker, it has absolute grip of the Special 40, and I, I said this in, in that video, the, the Special 40 is is not a match for the 590. The 590 could be played with speakers in your five or six figure sort of realms, multiple drivers, and it will command, you know, grip and control of those speakers. Uh, I, I'm using these speakers because I know them well, and I'm using them because I, I want to keep the same speaker in just for continuity. I could change the speakers out. It really doesn't matter because I'm trying to keep each amplifier as its own kind of review. But I feel it's fair to people who are looking at buying, especially buying from ours, that we describe the, the differences and uh, similarities between the amplifiers in the line. So yeah, great grip, power, and control of speakers. We should get to know that from, from Hegel amplifiers. They, they, they all have that. Speed and drive. So one thing I know, I, I know the 390 better than I know all of the rest of them. And one thing I've always been impressed by is its constant 
it's constant moving forward. He's that friend that you've got who you struggle to keep up with. You know, they're fast at everything. They're fast at business. They're fast at social. They're, they're just they're just constantly on the ball. That's what they amplify as like. It is moving forward all the time at a great pace. It, it just has this um, this 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 nudge behind music that you know you 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 rarely hear to be honest but the, the if it had a tempo it'd be quick you know so yeah speed drive i've i've put in here still a large amplifier and i just covered with the bind and post there that they're deeper than standard so it's a 20 kilo amplifier so it's still quite big you know so if if you need to get help moving it around or good amplifiers are heavy we we need to understand that a lot of new class d amplifiers are a fair bit lighter but good solid state a b and class a and stuff like that they're all going to be heavy so yeah it's a slightly deeper than what i call a din standard so you're uh, i can't remember what the what the standard sort of depth is for a separate uh, or a you know cd amplifier whichever but these are just ever so slightly deeper the, the at least the 590 and the 390 are uh, the 190 is a little bit closer to normal, but still slightly deeper. And then the 95 and the 120 are very, very standard sort of fit stuff. So yeah, that, that that's worth noting. You know, it, it's a very boring point, but they're quite a heavy piece of kit. It was that bad. It's not bad for me. I'm quite impressed that the, the heavier things are really just a typical bloke. Um, very easy going. Not fussy of partners. Now this is hyper important and extremely Hegel I I've only ever had one scenario and I, I will go into it because I don't want people to make the same mistake where I feel like I've partnered them incorrectly and that was with the Q acoustic concept 300 now the concept 300 with the right amplifier can shine it is a really good well-designed speaker it's decoupled from the stand and the floor which is just incredible you know it's a very good speaker but it doesn't really get on with hey glamps you know that's that's that synergy is important now that's the only scenario that i've found where the the the, the hegel sounded less than fantastic don't get me wrong that might be a tasting it might be subjective i i i don't know but me listening to it that pair didn't really go on very well every other speaker i've heard it with including my my vintage yamaha ns 1000s through to the contour 60i which is quite a demanding speaker it, it's been fantastic um you know a lot of wharfdale stuff all, all sorts of stuff around here it keeps this same cool calm way of playing music nothing sounds overly bright you know and 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 Larry kind of in your face it's always a very relaxing calm uh, experience when you're playing music from a amplifier it's very um, very fluid you know and enjoyable I've, I've mentioned here that you it can be enjoyed for hours and hours you know that you if you've if you hear something like that and you think oh you know everyone says that you need to try and listen to something for a long period of time because I'd, I'd hazard a guess that 50% of us can't listen to our systems for hours and hours. We can listen to them for a little while and then you might find yourself getting fed up with your music, tailoring off into or trailing off into watching the TV or whichever, getting distracted from the system. When you have that sort of synergy that has the capacity to keep you engaged for long periods of time, you need to keep hold of it because it's you know I've, I've said before the best pieces of kit in here are the ones that stay on the rack on the main rack for the longest periods of time uh it's purely coincidence that i say that because the 390 is the longest standing amplifier on our rack and that's probably because the 590 is so expensive that we only ever have them in stock for short periods of time you know but yeah, so uh, can be enjoyed for hours and hours. It's a very important point that, and one that a lot of people won't really understand until until they do, and when they do, they'll see why it's that important. <laughs> yeah, so you know, 
I, I would say all in all a, a great review for the 390 I think the 390 at £5,000 is an incredible integrated amplifier it's a high end amplifier you're, you're, you're going to get everything that you would expect at that price point and a bit more especially when comparing it to its big brother that costs twice the amount now just a final thought and something I want to add to this in case you're thinking of running out on the 590 and going buying a 390 because I've said that they're relatively close and the money is double for the 590 if the 390 were a 10,000 pound amplifier it wouldn't have such a positive review now there's a lot to think about in there you know and I could go into the reasons why but it isn't it's a 5,000 pound amplifier and I've listened to it as so as I do with every piece of kit that I listen to I listen to it at its price point I never listen to it and, and, and compare it in terms of sound to something twice its price it has no right to be there now if I listen to it and it is better than something that's twice its price that that'll come across and I'll and I'll tell people about that I've done it with our own lines of speakers and particularly with the special 40 and the and the heritage special you know so um yeah that's it for the 390 I think you know great piece of kit they're here I don't think you'll go wrong with it if there's anything that I've missed and that you'd like me to answer drop it in the comments below or drop me an email the comment section on any of our social media especially the message sections I've just put automated responses in there to forward to our email all of our comments should come to our email really because I deal with all of them personally comment sections and stuff where I'm not a, a, a full-time reviewer I, I can't spend my time on on YouTube I have to run this business and the car audio business and stuff like that um, I, I don't really get time other than sort of out of hours to sit down and reply to everyone's comments but I will see them at some point you just might not get an immediate reply so whichever way you want to come through just yeah give me a shout let me know what you think and uh, and if there's something that if you've got one and there's something that it isn't doing or that it is doing it's always worth giving me a shout and I'll see if I can help with it yeah I'm Carl this is Studio In Car if you're watching this because you're interested in buying come and speak to us alright because we'll happily sell one to you and we'll happily back it all the way alright take it easy guys it's 32 degrees in here now it's the hottest place in the world, so I'm going to go home. <laughs> now I'm in this awkward pose, and I don't know what to do with it.